If you have no experience, but you want to become a data analyst, there's not like a magical job board. Where it's like, this is the job board for data analysts with no experience. The job board doesn't exist. The catch is you have to create your own experience. So when you do personal projects or when you do some sort of projects, you put them on a portfolio, that creates experience. Welcome to the Data Career Podcast, the podcast that helps aspiring data professionals land their next data job. Here's your host, Avery Smith. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Data Career Podcast. I'm your host, Avery Smith, and I'm really excited for today's episode because we did an Ask Avery show. So many people have been in my DMs or my comments, hey, Avery, can we do another episode of the Ask Avery show, which is basically an opportunity to have you guys, all the listeners, ask me a question and choose the topics and get personal advice. So that's what today's episode is. Uh, I think it's quite fun. I live streamed it on LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. So if you're not following me there, that's the place where you can get notifications when I go live and do these types of things. So make sure you're following me there. The only other thing I'll say is if you haven't left us a rating and a review, you can go ahead and do so. And we're going to send you the Data Career Podcast Navigation Guide. So you'll have a link to that in the show notes or the description down below and uh, get your free Data Career Podcast Navigation Guide as our way of saying thank you for leaving a rating and a review. And with that, let's go ahead and uh, get into today's episode. This is going to be so much fun. This is going to be an ask me anything session that we do for becoming a data analyst in 2024. So if you're on YouTube or if you're on Instagram, please leave your questions in the comments and I will take those and I will alternate them with people live here on LinkedIn. If you're on LinkedIn, thank you so much for joining me. I want to pull you guys up to the stage. So if you have a question, about becoming a data analyst in 2024, this is your time to ask me. This is your time to ask me. Uh, we have our first listener question of 2024. This comes from Saeed on Instagram. And uh, they say, what's the future of data engineering in 2024? So the future of data engineering in 2024, I think is very bright. I think for the past decade, data science has been super sexy and people have been really into data science. But a lot of businesses have found out, wow, we actually can't do what we want to do data science-wise, machine learning-wise, AI-wise, without having a good, solid data engineer. So uh, I think a lot of people are, a lot of companies are going to be investing heavily in data engineering in 2024. This podcast, Data Career Podcast, does not focus that much on data engineering. If you guys want data engineering resources, I highly recommend checking out Seattle Data Guy, Joe Reese, and Zach Wilson on social media platforms. So hopefully that helps. From YVR8 on Instagram, do you need a degree to become a data analyst? And the short answer is no, you don't. And in fact, I was just talking to my therapist today about what I do, and he was so amazed that you actually don't need some sort of like a degree or something to become a data analyst. That was so confusing from him being a therapist. You obviously need a certification, like probably even a master's degree, right? But to become a data analyst, you definitely don't need a master's degree. And a lot of the times you don't even need a bachelor's degree. And that's the cool reason is tech is tech. Tech is what has become, if you can do it, we don't care right? Your results speak for yourself. So if you don't have a bachelor's degree in data analysis, first off, hey, me neither. That's not what my bachelor's in. So you're in good company. Second off, if you don't have a bachelor's degree at all, don't worry about it too much because if you can make a portfolio that shows off your skills and you can make the employer realize, hey, wow, this person actually can do what I need them to, then you don't need that degree. Now, does a degree make it easier? Yes, it does. I have students that go through my boot camp with master's degrees, bachelor's degrees, and no degrees. And to be honest, those that have bachelor's degrees usually have an easier time of landing their first data job. I do have students that are able to land these data jobs without a bachelor's degree, but a lot of the times there are companies who are still kind of old fashioned and just like that, check the box that you have a bachelor's degree. As long as it's in something, a lot of the times they don't care. Sometimes they want it to be more technical, um, but definitely, the cool thing about becoming a data analyst is you can have your work speak for yourself. So I'm going to bring up Ashita on LinkedIn. I'm going to allow you to speak, but Isaac, you've been waiting patiently. Isaac, what's your question? And go ahead and unmute yourself. Isaac, what's up? How are you doing? I'm good, Avery. Thank you for bringing me up to this platform. 
my question is that how do data analysts, how do we showcase our data cleaning proficiency in Excel? Because I think it's something is easier to write articles on processes on cleaning data with Python and SQL, but with Excel, I don't know how you can showcase your proficiency to recruiters and professionals in the field. Okay, so what's the question is, how can I show off my Excel skills or how can I show off my data cleaning skills? Excel, Excel skills. Okay, awesome. So Isaac's question, if you didn't hear, is how do I show off my skills in Excel? And the reason that's a question is it's a lot easier to show off your skills in like Power BI or Tableau, since you can just create a graphic a dashboard, right? And put it up on Tableau Public and send that link to your LinkedIn or whatever, right? But here's what I think. When you're creating a project and you're putting it on a portfolio, it needs to be interesting and you have to capture a hiring manager or a recruiter's attention and you have to stand out. You have to be different. And so a lot of the times, I think you need to do that through storytelling, right? We're obsessed with storytelling in this generation. We want to hear stories. And so if you just send me a dashboard, eh, that's not very exciting. But if you send me a story, that's exciting. And really, you can tell a story with Excel, Power BI, Python, SQL, JavaScript, like whatever tech stack you're using, you can create a data story with that tech stack. Now, the way you do that, there's a couple different ways. Either do that through written word or a video. And so a lot of the times when you're doing stuff in Excel, obviously you can't just like send the, the dashboard link, right? But you can still create a story. So whether that's like creating a PowerPoint presentation and a little talking head where you're kind of explaining your insights, or maybe that's just creating some sort of like an article and talking about the steps you do in Excel, showcasing each one of the functions that you're using, showcasing any graphs that you make in Excel, right? Because you can still make great graphs. You can even make dashboards in Excel. So taking whatever work you've done in Excel, breaking it into step-by-step, step, adding some human text, like explaining this is step one, this is step two, this is step three, this is my final you know, analysis, these are the bullet points that you should take away. Taking all the work that you did inside of that workbook, pulling it out and putting it into a story is always the best thing that you can do when you're creating a portfolio. And so you can do that in an Excel or SQL or Power BI. So hopefully it's not a problem if you're, what tool you're using and it's more about storytelling. Does that make sense, Isaac? Yes, very much. Tell me what's on your mind, Ashita. Yes. Yeah, so I have been looking for uh, data analyst internships for like last two months now, and I have been facing a lot of rejections. But like I have been following all the strategies that are there on LinkedIn and on YouTube as well, how to uh, write resume and all those tips of cold networking and all. But like, what should be my strategy from now to get an internship in two months? So the question is, how do I get a data internship quickly? And the answer is you put out a lot of applications and you use your network as much as you can. So the first thing I want to talk about is the networking aspect. It is always easier to land a job when you know someone at the job. And so you might be thinking, oh, I don't really know that many people, you know, that have a data job or whatever. But yes, you do. Pull out your phone. Go through your contacts one by one. Ask if there's any internships at that company. Like for instance, if you go to like your phone, maybe the first contact is Adam. See where Adam works and see if that company has any internships. If they do, maybe you send Adam a message. Hey, Adam, great to catch up with you. Hey, I'm looking for an internship. I saw your company's hiring. Do you happen to know the hiring manager or recruiter that I could talk to to learn more about this position? So the more you use your network, the better. And since I can see, Ashita, that you are a college student, if you can use your college network. So like people that re graduated recently from UC San Diego, or maybe your professors, maybe you ask them, like, do you know any companies that might be hiring? Also, when you're at university, there's always those career fairs and everything. There's those career events where a lot of the times they bring in companies from outside to give career advice and to talk about internships and stuff like that. Go to as many of those as you possibly can. Using your network is usually how you can get an internship quickly. If you're unable to use the network and you're struggling, then it really comes down to kind of a numbers game. You have to apply to a lot of jobs. Here's a fun fact about your resume. You can make whatever crap up on your resume that you want. Now, I'm not saying to do that and to go and lie, but if you're not getting callbacks, it's probably because your resume doesn't match what the hiring manager or recruiter is looking for. And so my suggestion would be to A-B test the crap out of your resume. Send out like, 10 applications with your resume, see what happens, change some things, you know, try adding different bullet points or a different description or like adding different words, different keywords, stuff like that. Send out 10 more, just test your resume as much as you can. So that's kind of my advice is to either send out as many applications as you can, A-B testing your resume as quickly and often as you can. 
and or to use your network as much as you can because it's always easier to land a job if you know someone. Does that help, Ashita? Do you have any follow-up questions for that? No, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, let's go ahead and look at YouTube and Instagram. Let's do this one. Can you list the main technical skills required to land your first data job? Yes, I can. And in my opinion, it's quite easy as long as you can count to three. Number one is data analysis with Excel. Number two is data wrangling with SQL. Number three is data visualization with Tableau. Those are the three things I think that you should be learning as you're trying to land your first data job, okay? Everything else, I almost feel like you should ignore, especially if you're trying to go all in on Python or all in on R. I love Python, I love R, but they're not really required for entry-level jobs, and they have a steep learning curve because they involve a lot of programming. SQL is like 20 commands. Once you figure out the 20 commands in SQL, you're good to go. Tableau is basically like PowerPoint. It's just drag and drop clicking, right? So it's pretty easy. And a lot of you guys have a start already in Excel. So if you can learn those three things, I think that's the best place to start. And then you can get your foot in your door, get a job, start making money, and then you can learn Python, then you can learn R, then you can learn JavaScript. Like you can always learn things after you land your first data job. So in my opinion, learn the bare minimum to land that first data job and then build off of that. That's like a key component of my SPN method, if you've ever heard of it, skills, portfolio, network. Those are the three ingredients you need to land a data job. And those are the three skills I think you should focus on. So hopefully that makes sense. Good question. LJ on YouTube asks, do you have any suggestions for people who have little to no experience or have worked jobs that are considered dead end for lack of a better word? So if you're trying to land a data job and you've worked like, I guess I'll call it dead end jobs or like maybe like more blue collar jobs, you definitely need to show your skills because you don't necessarily have the like desk work experience. And so showcasing your skills becomes more and more important and also using your network becomes more and more important. And so I work with a lot of like construction workers that become data analysts through my bootcamp. I've worked with waiters that have become data analysts through my bootcamp. I've worked with people who are like Uber drivers or DoorDashers to become a data analyst. And the key for them always is their portfolio because you don't really have the experience on your resume and your work experience section that you can show off. But if you could create that experience yourself through projects, that a lot of the times will serve as your experience. So creating projects, relevant projects that showcase your skills is going to be really key. So I would focus as much as you can on your portfolio. And then the next thing I would also focus on is your network. Because once again, this is a theme for this episode. The more people you know, the more people you connect with, the luckier you get and the easier the job gets. So for example, I'm super religious. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I go to church every single week for the last, I don't even know, 20 years of my life, basically. And the cool thing about that is I have a really strong church network because of that. And so actually, when I landed my first lab technician job, I used to be a chemical lab technician. I landed that because of someone I knew at church. And so whether it's church, whether it's baseball, whether it's a parenting community, school, whatever, you need to find your network and talk to those people because a lot of the time the opportunities will source from there. So when you don't have that strong work experience, using your network and the projects becomes more important. And that's why we talk about the SBN method all the time. So great question. Hopefully that helps LJ. Let's take this question from YouTube. Power BI versus Tableau. Power BI or Tableau, which one should you learn? The answer is probably both, but I would first learn Tableau and here is the reason why. I think it is more in demand, not by a lot, but it is on job descriptions more than Power BI is. And two, it has a stronger community and it's easier to download. The Tableau community has Tableau Public. You can download it for free on your computer. And it also has an amazing community of like weekly challenges and like forums with tons of answers. So it's really fun to learn as a group and as a community. Also, Power BI is only available on Windows computers, which means that like half of you guys that have Macs, it's a pain in the butt to get loaded onto your machine. So I have my students learn Tableau first. But if you want to learn Power BI first, there's nothing wrong with that. It is high in demand. I actually think Power BI is a little bit more user-friendly and intuitive, like where to click and drag things. So I really like Power BI. BI yeah, can do also a little bit more with like cleaning the data and like organizing the data than Tableau Public can. So they're both great tools to learn. Eventually you'll learn both. Once you've learned one, learning the other one will be much easier. So if it was me, I'd start with Tableau, but I think they're both great to learn. Great question. Great question. Okay, let's do some more YouTube questions here. This is a question from Matthew on YouTube. Have you worked with many teachers looking to make a career transition? I'm hoping to bring many transferable skills, but worry there'll be limitations too. Yes, 
So if you're a teacher thinking about getting into the data world, I definitely think you should. I've worked with a lot of teachers. In fact, that's my number one customer for my bootcamp is transitioning teachers. And we've helped people go from teacher to data analyst in as little as 90 days. Teachers actually make great data analysts. They have so many skills that are useful. They have communication, they have teaching. A lot of them are very technical and they understand how to learn. That's like the coolest thing about data analytics is you're never going to learn at all. So being able to learn and know about learning is really key because in this journey, you never stop learning. So yes, teachers make great data analysts. You bring a lot of transferable skills with you. Now that being said, it's not a technical position, right? It's not like you've been doing math problems or you've been an engineer or you've been a programmer for the last decade. So we need to showcase how good of a professional you can be. And so once again, we do that with a portfolio and we do that with network. I've had people go from teacher to making six figures because they had a strong portfolio and a strong network. Once you learn the skills, you're about where everyone else is. The portfolio and the network is really what sets you apart. But definitely, if you're a teacher, I think you should go all in on data analytics. You can work from home. It's very flexible. There's like very loose due dates. It's like my mom's plan. My mom's a teacher, so I love teachers. My mom's trying to get a sub. There's no subs in data analytics. You don't work the weekends. You make a lot more money typically. So I think it's a great career for teachers and definitely happy to help teachers out uh, if they have any more follow-up questions. Great question. Okay, let's do this next question here on YouTube. Supujit says, can you please let us know how to get data analyst job for people with no work experience, where and how to find the jobs? So if you have no experience, but you want to become a data analyst, there's not like a magical job board. Where it's like, this is the job board for data analysts with no experience. The job board doesn't exist. Every, every data job requires experience. The catch is you have to create your own experience. So when you do personal projects or when you do some sort of projects, you put them on a portfolio, that creates experience. That's you doing data analytics work and the evidence, tangible evidence, here's the data set I started with, here's what I did, here was step one, here was step two, here was step three, and here's like how I did everything, here are the results. It's like tangible proof, they cannot deny it. So there's not like a magical job board where it's like, oh yeah, these are the, the job boards you know, that don't require any experience. No, they all kind of require experience. 99% of the jobs are going to require experience. And a lot of times they're going to require two to three years of experience and you're not going to have that. But the trick is, is to make the hiring manager or recruiter be like, man, this person's smart. This person can do what I want. I don't care if they don't have the experience. They have these projects on their portfolio. So that's the key is it's like you create your own experience with projects and portfolio. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, pull some people up here on LinkedIn. Let's uh, go ahead and hear from Harshit. Yeah, man, thank you so much to like wait. Like I'm in the office as of right now, so I'm working for the United States as account manager. So uh, currently I'm in India actually, it's like offshore work. So my main concern is I'm not able to uh, get a job as a data analyst. I want to learn about a data analyst. How can I get a job? So do you know much about data analytics already? I have really just a knowledge about it, like what kind of tools I need to learn about it, but I'm not able to how I need to get a job. Like how, how if I need to learn about more, I need to do some of the practical projects. So how can I do it? Yeah, so really it's, unless you have like an extremely strong network and you have an in and a company, you're definitely going to have to learn skills before you land a job. Now that being said, you don't have to learn all the skills. Just learn Excel, Tableau, and SQL. And even those three, you don't have to be, I mean, you have to be proficient, but you don't have to be like amazing. You don't have to master those. So I would definitely start learning with those three. So I would learn those three skills. I would build right, a project. But my, my main concern is without experience, many companies are not entertaining the pressures data analysts. So how can I get that? So you create your own experience by by doing the projects. And and also like I would say the majority of you guys are underestimating how much you can actually use data analytics at your work. So for example, when I was a chemical lab technician. Like I mixed test tubes, you guys. Mm -hmm. I wore a white coat. I wore goggles. I mixed acids together. I ran experiments. But there was opportunities for me to actually analyze data in that job. I would guess that the majority of you guys are probably underestimating how much you can actually use Excel at your job, how much you could use a Tableau at your job. And that counts as experience. So the combination of taking your current job, figuring out ways that you can be a data analyst in your current role, plus creating your own experience by doing jobs. That's why in, in my bootcamp, the Data Analytics Accelerator, we build eight projects from scratch. 
And that That's way, when, w- when recruiters and hiring managers look at it, it's like, oh, wow, this person has eight projects. And so even though they've worked as a teacher or they've worked as a door dasher or an Uber driver, it's like, well, at least they have these projects that showcase their skills and sh- creates experience. Right. My advice would be to listen to the Data Career Podcast, listen to a couple episodes. We have some about Excel. We have some about data visualization, stuff like that. And then I have a free webinar. If you click on my link profile or if you're on YouTube or or Instagram, you go to my socials. I have a free webinar. It's about 45 minutes where I'll give you the first three steps and then I'll talk about my bootcamp more at the end. Thank you so much. Okay, great. We got Johanna. Johanna, thank you so much for uh, being patient. Thank you for having me. That's what I wanted to say first. And second, basically I did bioinformatics and I work for a big company, which is federal. And I wanted to shift to data science. So that was my struggle. The same thing, what everybody was saying. I am very proficient in Python, in R, in machine learning. But however, I didn't do like, I use Excel, but like not for analysis. I just do everything with coding. So I don't mention those in my resume. I know those things, for, let's say, for example. And then what do I do? Like in the skills, do I add PowerPoint, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft 365? Do I have to put them at the bullet or do I have to like, to phrase what I have done in a table. Hey, this is the project that I used through Excel 365 Power BI. Uh, just like because as a bioinformaticians, you put everything on GitHub, and then you have to just put the link for GitHub, and then they just go and see what kind of programs or pipelines you have created. But for data science positions and data analysis, which is basically the same for me, what do you do? I don't understand it. I'm really bad at resume writing, and I wanted to hear it from you. Yeah, great question, Johanna. So first things first, I would say that you are right that data analytics and data science are very similar and they could almost be interchangeable. But the role data analyst and the role data scientist are actually quite different. And in my opinion, they're not interchangeable. So that's the first thing as I would get really laser focused on understanding like what I actually want to be career wise for you, since you're already good at programming and you're doing all that analysis in R and Python, I would suggest becoming a data scientist. I think becoming a data analyst for you would be, I don't want to say a step down, but you'd be competing against more people. And you already have the hardest part of like the programming down. So becoming a data scientist makes sense. So I would focus only on data scientist jobs and not on data analyst jobs. That being said, and with that being said, is you don't really need to know Excel as a data scientist. When I was a data scientist, it's not like I used Excel really at all. So I would not really, like, I wouldn't really worry about Excel. And what I would worry about instead is making sure you can showcase all of the machine learning, the pipeline building the Python, all that coding stuff that you did. Now, having the GitHub is really great. I think GitHub is is awesome, especially for more programming heavy positions, but you still have to be able to have a recruiter or a hiring manager look at it and know in an instant that you're good. And a lot of the times they're not gonna go read your code line by line. And so for example, what I would try to do is I would try to, for example, create, since you're already good at programming, one of the easiest things that you could do is create like a web app. So just use Dash from Plotly or like Streamlit in Python and create a web app that does some basic bioinformatics stuff. You could even take stuff that you did in school and just like repurpose it into a project and have that on your GitHub, have it on your resume as well. I think that's really key. But like at at your point, you have all the skills that you need to land a data scientist job, especially like in the bio space. I would probably try to focus more like as a data scientist in like pharmaceuticals or like bioengineering or microbio or something like that, because you have that background as well in like the bio. And, but you have all the skills. So it's just about marketing yourself correctly, using your network, using your portfolio, using your resume, using your LinkedIn correctly at this point. And from what you've told me, it sounds like you have all the skills you need. You just need to work on marketing yourself. Yeah, I wish I met you. Earlier, oh my God, because I just enrolled for a bootcamp for data science. Like some people said, oh, you need certifications. And I wish we met earlier, but it's good to know you. And I'm always going to knock on your door saying, hey, what do you think of this? Thank you. You're a good person. Oh, good. I'm so glad, Johanna. I wish you would have met me earlier, but wish you the best of luck with the bootcamp. And hey, despite what they teach you in the bootcamp, just remember that the SPN method is the key for landing data jobs, skills, portfolio, network. And skills is only one third of the equation. So I hope the bootcamp incorporates portfolio and networking. And if it doesn't, 
you know, come hang out on LinkedIn, come hang out on TikTok, come hang out on the podcast and get some advice about that. Cause that's two thirds of the equation, the portfolio and the network. So much. Your time is gold. I am so grateful for that. No problem. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it, Johanna. Okay. If you guys are finding value from this, make sure you check out the data career podcast, Spotify, Apple podcast, YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts. I put out a new episode every single week with this type of content. So lots of free golden information. So definitely check that out. Okay. Let me check on YouTube and Instagram here. Okay. Can you suggest SQL and Excel videos for data analysis? In my opinion, if you want to learn Excel, the best YouTube channel, in my opinion, is Shandu. Check out his page on YouTube. Also, Alex the Analyst has great videos. If you're trying to learn SQL, definitely check out Alex the Analyst as well. If you want to apply those things into projects, that's where I would check out my channel, Avery Smith, Data Career Jumpstart. I have a lot of videos about how to take your skills and put them into projects. So that's where I would check out that information. Let's take this question. Do you think the data analysis uh, industry is saturated? So do I think the data analysis industry is saturated? The answer is no. Data is only getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And companies are just starting to crack and realize, wow, how powerful data can be. So down the road, I think they will hire more data scientists. They will hire more data engineers. They will hire more data analysts. That being said, I definitely think AI will play a big role. I do not see AI overtaking data analyst positions. I see it being a tool like a hammer. And I think that most data analysts will start to use things like ChatGPT, OpenAI, all that good stuff. So I don't think it's saturated. It's something that I think we should continue to monitor especially how AI is going to interact with data analysts, but I don't see data analyst jobs going away in the next little bit. I think it is an awesome and growing sector. Is there any advantage to hyper-specialization in data analysis, like focusing on one's projects on a very narrow sector and leveraging that to get the attention of employees in that sector? So when you're trying to land a data job, it's always easiest to focus on what you have domain experience in. So for example, when I transferred to a data career, I was a chemical lab technician. My first data job was a data analyst at a chemical company. Then my next job as a data scientist was at ExxonMobil, a chemical company. And so it's always easier to rely and to leverage and to lean upon your domain experience when you're trying to land that first data job. Now, that being said, once you're into that field, you can always pivot from there. So for example, after I worked at Exxon, I did consulting. I worked for cybersecurity companies. I worked for motorcycle companies. I worked for all sorts of different types of companies. And you can pivot because now you have that data experience on your resume. But when you're just getting started, you want to leverage that experience as much as you can when you can. That being said, if you want to pivot into a different industry, you totally can. And making projects for that industry. So for example, if you've been a teacher, you want to get into marketing, doing marketing projects will make it more likely that you get like a marketing analyst position. It's not a guarantee, but it's always a good idea. In my bootcamp, the Data Analytics Accelerator, we do eight different projects from eight different industries. We do one on marketing. We do one on education. We do one on healthcare. We do one on finance, sports, logistics, and HR. I think I can't remember the last one, but we try to cover our bases. So that way you have a project in each industry. So no matter what you're interested in, you can hopefully have at least one project. But yes, I do think doing projects on the industry you're interested in getting into is always a good idea. Okay, this question about Gen AI, I'm probably not the person to answer on. Do you find data analysts transfer into becoming a data scientist or a data engineer? Yes. When it comes to choosing data analyst, data scientist, or data engineer, and you're just getting started, I personally, would go to data analysts. The reason being, it's the lowest barrier to entry. It's the easiest to land quickly. Now, that being said, it doesn't necessarily pay the highest. Like I definitely think the average salary of data scientists, data engineer are higher, but all you need to have is the word data somewhere on your resume, and then you can pivot into data science or you can pivot into data engineering. And then you can actually be making a lot of money, a lot of good money while you're learning. So a lot of people would be like, oh, I'm going to go get like a master's degree in data engineering. I'm going to pay $35,000 and it's going to take me two years. In my opinion, I think you should try to become a data analyst in six months. You're likely to get a bump of $20,000 and then you can learn to be a data engineer at your data analyst job because there is a lot of overlap. And heck, maybe even your new company will pay you to go to school and become a data engineer. So I personally think the lowest barrier entry is data analyst. You can do it fairly quickly and fairly affordable, and then you can pivot outside of it from. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. This has been an awesome session, you guys. Thank you everyone who is listening on YouTube and on Instagram. We kind of did an experiment today and broadcasted to those platforms. Thank you everyone on LinkedIn. 
If you guys want to learn more from me, I actually have a free webinar that you guys can watch where I kind of explain what you should learn in Excel, what you should learn in SQL, what you should learn in Tableau. Then I talk about how you can find jobs that don't require a lot of experience and actually allow you to talk to a human, not to get auto-rejected by a computer. And then I talk about the importance of projects and portfolios and how you can get started and why they actually mean so much. If you guys want to check those out, you can go to my, my social. So if you're on LinkedIn, you can just click the link in my bio. It'll say like become a data analyst webinar or something like that. Click on that and watch. If you're on Instagram, you can click on my profile and go to my link in bio and check it from there. And if you're on YouTube, just go to my latest video and you'll see it in the description show notes. I think all of you guys would really benefit from it. I think you guys would really enjoy it. So if you haven't seen it yet, please go see it, check it out. It's absolutely free. 